Working man. How's the mustache look? So we're here back at the shop a few weeks after our air testing where we had professional race car driver Dan Clark and my man here Justin Green um, perform a few different aerodynamic tests out at Putnam Park Road Course. Um, we did do back-to-back -back testing um, just so you guys do know that there. Now Justin here was nice enough to lend us his personal uh, Subaru BRZ which is sitting here behind us for this test. Justin, what were your first thoughts when we asked you to help us perform these tests? I, I was kind of, I was excited. I mean, I've never taken all the arrow off the car. So it was a learning experience for me. Um, I mean, I was, I was stoked to help out. Awesome, awesome. So I know a few months back when we did the actual testing, um, what your thoughts were, but can you please reiterate to our fans here on YouTube and Facebook, um, what your thoughts were after taking the car out without having any of the arrow on the car? Like I was saying earlier, like it was the first time I've ever been on track without any arrow. So at first it was a little scary, it was a little cold, a little slidey. Um, but uh, yeah, it was interesting because you, you don't always get that opportunity. Normally you build a car to, you know, you want to go as fast as you can, you don't backtrack. Yeah. You, you never get a chance to do that because it wants to go slower. Yeah. So. Uh, it was a good opportunity for me to, I mean, just try the car. Really learn the car. Learn the car, see what happens. And it, it, a lot happened. It, I mean, times, I mean, times were slow. Yeah. Which is granted. And we'll put those times here so you guys can see the different times yeah, as well. they're bad, they're bad. Uh, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a learning experience. Driving a car with, coming from basically full arrow before to no arrow is, you learn a lot yeah. from the car. You learn the limits of the car and what actually arrow can do for you. All right, well, during our second test, we reinstalled our street front splitter um, with the race upgrade, our, our front splitter end plates, aggressive rear diffuser, and then for the first test, we installed our high efficiency rear wing. Justin, after adding the arrow to the car, going right back out on track moments later, how did the car feel? It was. 10 times better. Like the, the grip there was insane. Like you could drive it harder, like you could keep doing lap after lap. But I mean, we were on a time crunch, so yep. I mean, I'm not a professional driver, so I didn't get that much time. But it, you, you didn't have to worry about it. You turn the car in, it turns. The grip, grip was always there. It was, there was never a, a moment coming out of a turn when you're on throttle, is the back gonna step out? Because with no arrow, it, it did that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the car had no power. So before you wouldn't think it, you know, a 200 horsepower BRZ FRS would step out, but without arrow at, you know, 75 miles an hour in a turn, the back's gonna come around. But with arrow, you, that number jumps up. Mm -hmm. You're doing 85 in the turn one, well I was. I mean, that's like a lot slower yeah. than what Dan was doing, but, he knows. Um, but it helps, it helps a lot. All right, now for our third test, we decided to swap the high efficiency rear wing for one of our competitor's rear wings. Um, this wing is much larger. Um, we're, not we're not mentioning any companies here, um, but after uh, getting comfortable again with all the arrow on the car and then switching to a larger rear wing, did the car feel any different? Did you, did you feel slower coming around corners? Did you feel faster coming around corners, it, straights? It felt slower in general. Uh, I think it was just too big for the car. There was just, it was just too much rear downforce, which too much rear can, you know, impede lap times. I mean, not all downforce is created equal. It's not all the same. From what I've read and what, you know, talking to Dan, um, but yeah, it was, it was slower for me. I was slower with, I think Dan was slower with it too. He was. It was, I think it was just too big for the car, for this platform. It was yep. just too big of a wing. Now, for our very last session of the day, we swapped to our beautiful UCW rear wing, which you see here mounted to Justin's car. He decided to keep it after the testing because he liked it so much. Um, now, I already know your thoughts. Um, this wing was your fastest time of the day. Yes, yes it was. 
Apart from that, how did you feel um, with this wing here on the car as compared to the high efficiency and the competitor's rear wing? Comparing it to the high efficiency wing, it was, it felt the same. I think with this, it had a, it has more rear grip, um, but I was just able to get more, just more, 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 more lap mm -hmm. times. So it helped increase the lap times. That might be why it's faster. It was like the weekend after the testing, I took it back out and I went six tenths faster okay. than our testing. So there's still time out there. Justin, again, thank you for your time. Um, thank you again for letting us borrow this beautiful car for our testing. Um, it's also nice to see that you do have a couple other new various components on the yes. car. The hood louvers, the die planes, it's looking great. We'll, we'll get a couple images up there so you guys can see that as well. That's going to be it for Justin and I here at the shop. We're going to head on over to Eric and Paul. They've got a few last minute um, discussions that they want to kind of go over with you guys. Thoughts um, that they've also talked to Dan a little bit on his thoughts on the car as well. Um, and until next time. All right guys, so this is the conclusion for our wing testing. We basically were able to test three wings back to back with a professional race car driver, Dan Clark, and a typical track day enthusiast who was Justin. So the three wings that we tested was our high efficiency, which is a 200 millimeter cord by about 12, uh, 1280 millimeter span uh, swan neck wing. And then we tested our UCW, which is a 250 millimeter cord, 1650 millimeter span. And then we also were able to test a competitor wing, which is very similar in size to the UCW. Ultimately, the high efficiency and the UCW performed the best. With the UCW being a little bit more draggy, I guess, if that's a word, and the high efficiency basically performing the best for the professional driver. Now, the regular track day enthusiast, Justin, he did the best with our UCW, and ultimately, one of the conclusions that, that we came to was that um, some of the track day enthusiasts might enjoy and, and benefit more from rear downforce or a rear biased era balance and that is because it feels safer from the seat of the pants um, it does feel safer but at the same time it will be a little bit slower than say something that's more front biased uh, but it does allow the enthusiast to push harder in the car and and do it safer um, Paul also has some some data stuff that he uh, found beneficial from the testing uh, yeah looking at the data uh with the UCW compared to the high efficiency, the high efficiency was at the highest angle of attack and the UCW was actually at zero degrees uh, with the professional driver. And that's where the uh, professional driver still went faster because he preferred more front bias. Now, once Justin got in the car, he went immediately faster at zero degrees versus the high efficiency. And then we started giving him more angle of attack and he ended up going the fastest at, I believe, six degrees. Um, so that basically tells us, looking at data-wise, you will have more drag with the UCW, so you're gonna get a little less um, top speed, but he felt more confident in the car and the corners and was able to carry more speed, so ultimately he went faster. And then comparing that to the competitor wing, it was not producing as much downforce as the UCW at six degrees, but at zero degrees, it produced more downforce than the UCW did. However, it had significant more drag, so it's not nearly as finish, uh, efficient as our UCW, which means the UCW downforce per drag is gonna significantly do better. And it actually makes more overall downforce if you start increasing angle of attack. So we, we developed that in mind to basically have the UCW as the next step up from the high efficiency if you want more rear downforce. All right guys, that concludes our wing comparison conclusion, I guess. Um, be sure to check out our website. We should have the UCW for sale within the next few months, uh, pending any issues with uh, coronavirus. But yeah, thanks. Subscribe, like us. Uh, please send us any comments that you have and any questions regarding the testing. Thanks. Is it on? I think so.
so.